Hello everyone. Hello, hello. Uh, I hope that everything is working fine because it's been a while I didn't stream and then I had to do some changes on my computer then just let me know if you see me okay, you hear me okay? No? Yes? No? Let me know in the chat. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, then for this uh, new session, oh, sorry, forget, I forget to tell uh, tell you who I am. Uh, sorry, I'm so used <laughs> to do the stream then. Uh, I'm Tomar Russell from Pixologic, uh, and um, this is a new uh, series of uh, uh, ZBrush Live video that I will do. Um, the last one was about uh, figuring creation with ZBrush, and I finished everything in time for a business trip in Japan where we did some presentation, treachers and stuff like that. Uh, I should have some photos. Okay, then what you see right now, this is the end result of the figuring of um, the last uh, the, the last stream, uh, series of stream. Um, then it has been a very long project, something like 11 uh, streams to cover everything and of course I some part like painting like that uh, I just did that uh, offline because of the lack of time and also because of the lack of time I just did just four shades uh, of grey a little bit of pink on this area uh, it's pretty big to be honest uh, you see you have right now everything with the base and I have one photo you see that one there is this glass rod which broke two times in my head hands sorry uh, and it's kind of dangerous and where is this one sorry i'm looking for one photo okay then this is um the biggest one and i i'm just it's behind me uh okay she's here just in the back um then this first version you can watch all the videos some of them are very interesting, some of us are, let's say, a little bit more boring uh, because it's very repetitive. And for me, this is just a first prototype and I will um, just refine some parts because some stuff doesn't work not enough in my taste. In my taste. Uh, I need to uh, refine some details. Or also, you see the base uh, here. Uh, there is some white inside because of the, the global white of the figurine. I printed that in a raw resolution because of the time then you see right now the layers and it's not possible to send this kind of stuff. Um, where you see all this kind of folds and uh, stitching, I need to improve that. It's too thin. There is not enough depth uh, about that. And also I've been very lucky to make this figure in falling just uh, uh, before packing that for Japan, <laughs> unfortunately. Then, yeah, uh, I'm just to go back about me. If you don't know me very well, uh, yes, I'm doing figurines. I'm doing many organic stuff, little bit of art surfaces, um, but it's not my main job. I'm working at Pixologic then on the brush, um, but of course I really enjoy this software. Then that's why uh, I love building stuff, and uh, I'm a kind of. 3D printing specialist, let's say. Uh, I have multiple printers, and for the last one, it has been printed with a Form 2 printer. And for this new project, we'll go mainly to FDM printing. I have, we don't see it just on, on the side, I have a Ultimaker 2 Plus extended printer, and then for this session, we will do a Kylo Ren uh, helmet, uh, mask, not a mask, really the, the helmet, um, to do some kind of cosplay stuff. It's been a while that I really wanted to do this kind of big project. Uh, Joseph Dross did this kind of stuff as well, and I wanted to do my own. Um, then uh, we will for this series of video I don't think it would be a lot uh, to be honest something like perhaps two or three sessions I hope um, then we will build everything and we will also look about the 3d scan because it needs to fit my head and this is the first thing we'll do today um, of course the modeling sculpting which will be a mix of the z modeler sculpting tools boolean stuff then a lot of 
new features from the brush for R8. And of course, at the end, uh, all the preparation work for 3D printing because it needs to fit my head. I need to consider uh, do I need to split some parts to do the assembly because this is quite big. And even if my printer is big, it won't fit uh, uh, just in one piece in my printer. And also for uh, all the, the post process about sending and FDM printing means a lot of sending, uh, painting and this kind of stuff, it will be way more easier to work in multiple parts. Then this is roughly what we will do during uh, all, uh, all these sessions. Um, and Gary, no, in fact, I don't really cosplay. Um, I find that very cool, to be honest. I love people doing cosplay. This is, I mean, anyway, as soon as this is creative, I love that anyway. Uh, but I have two kids, uh, eight years old and 12 years old. And of course, they enjoy this kind of stuff. They enjoy Star Wars, uh, Star Wars sorry, um, like I do. Um, just to show you. I think I showed that in a previous stream, but you see with 3D printing, uh, you can do this kind of big stuff, which uh, fit my head. Um, it was just some kind of test. I wanted to do more, but no time, unfortunately. But of course, my kids enjoy. Um, and if I have a big printer, well, it's better to do big prints. Um, okay, then. The first thing, uh, before moving to ZBrush, we will move to another software. Um, mainly I will speak about, of course, ZBrush, but uh, Photoscan from HDSoft, um, which is a software to do photogra photogrammetry scanning. Um, and uh, after another software for preparing the, the, the printing for uh, FDM printing, uh, which is simplified 3D, but it will be more at the end of the process. Oh, Perhaps today, perhaps today, um, we will see. Anyway, uh, let me just hide my references. And before just speaking about references, I will uh, then just move to the scan part. Uh, I will even quit the brush and I will launch Photoscan. Uh, of course, as usual, if you have some questions, just uh, use the chat. Please uh, mention me uh, at Polyscult. Uh, like that, it will be more easier for me to um, see all the messages. Then, um, I will speak about some technical stuff uh, about 3D scan because I, I don't want just to use uh, an end result of the scan because a lot of people think that scan is very expensive or maybe complicated. While of course you can buy very expensive 3D scanners, uh, but with uh, um, even a cheap DSLR camera or even your cell phone, you can do some decent scan. Of course, not very high end, um, uh, uh, um, uh, very accurate scan, but enough to do this kind of project. Because for this project, what I need to, to what I need is just to have a template of my head, well, more than a template, but having the proportion of my head to know when I will build this helmet, helmet uh, where will be the eyes, the shape of my head, to be sure it will fit, of course, my head. Um, then for that, I don't look about small details, and you will see the result of the scan, it's pretty, uh, well, not pretty, <laughs> not very nice. Um, then, uh, let me launch another software, which is Lightroom. Uh, from Adobe. Uh, Lightroom is a raw uh, file format editor because I don't know if you know about that, but uh, I'm doing a lot of photography, in fact, on my own. And um, when you are shooting a photo, you can shoot photo which will be in JPEG files, let's say, uh, or in raw file. Raw file is, is uh, just what it means, raw uh, uh, data from your uh, sensor of your camera. Then there is no post-process, almost nothing which is done on the photo. Uh, then it lets you have way more control on your photography, but you need to have a software to do that. You can do that in Photoshop, but just to uh, um, prepare your photography, uh, Lightroom is way more better for uh, this kind of process. Um, then I want to express Lightroom, and on top of that, you see this is in French. I don't think I can change the language on the fly. Uh, oh, you see, <laughs> I should be in English, <laughs> and I'm in French, and then it doesn't work. Um, then uh, I, I will... Uh, Gary, I will just answer that uh, later. Um, then, 
I will explain for 3D scan what is the process. I mean, um, what are the steps to take your photography and some tips about taking the photography before, of course, moving to the uh, scan software. Then uh, you see just below, this is a series of photos. There is 82 photos. Um, and if you look about the at the thumbnails, uh, they have been taken all around me. You need to do some circle around your subject to take your photos and you need you need to to take photos on the um really on the the, the, the front side but uh, another series of photos on the more on the top of the head and um just facing sorry as uh, the top of let's say the forehead or the, just the nose but from the top to the nose or from the bottom to the nose just to create a kind of sphere around your model but it's not that easy in fact because first you have your subject which may move and of course the more movement you have you will have a lot of issues about aligning all the photos together to build the scan then a lot of noise and things like that perhaps you saw this um let me you saw these photos of photogrammetry um let me open uh, uh, google you see this kind of uh setup uh, sorry, this is wow. This is very blurry. Uh, perhaps this one is better. Why? Come on. Okay. You see, then this is a way to do photogrammetry where you have an array of uh, DSLR and then you are taking, let's say, hundred or two hundred photographs, photo, photos, sorry, at the same time. Then it's very accurate, and you can have the skin pores. It's it's. In my opinion, the best technique uh, to do scan, you can jump, but of course, it's very limited to uh, static movements. Then I had to simulate this arrays of camera all around, and I asked my wife <laughs> to take the photography, uh, the photos for, for me, then you see this is all around. Uh, the problem is when you are taking your photos, um, you also need to consider not only the movement but uh, where you are uh, uh, aiming for your photos and as you can see this one has been taken from the bottom let's say to the top uh, to have just the, 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 the bottom of my my head the problem is uh, my wife didn't lay down it was since she has to take the photo very quickly because my wife took the photo of me um, she just uh, 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 hand uh, handles the camera and trying, of course, to find the good position. It's not very accurate. Uh, that's why it takes some some preparation, some uh, some tests. But you can do some pretty decent scan uh, with some jump, some practice. Uh, another thing that you need to consider is the right now is is the lighting. The lighting. Uh, it was very sunny when I took these photos, and you see I have harsh shadows, and it creates some very contrast areas. Uh, sorry, so this one is kind of blurry a little bit, but you, you see this contrast and the shadows and it's not very good. Then if you don't have a strong lighting that you can't control, of course, being outside is the best way, but it's the best when you have a little bit of clouds in the, uh, in the sky. You see this uh, slightly cloudy skies where the sun is kind of... Um, uh, hidden slightly hidden uh, by the cloud then you have of course some soft shadows uh, but still enough light and another reason why uh, you need to have some light then what you see right now on screen is a depth of field simulator sorry this is the first one i found online um, the depth of field is you know this effect about having something which is on focus out of focus depending of where you're shooting and based on the aperture of your camera and of course the lens uh, meaning that you can have let's say your nose which is on focus and with some lenses and based on the distance you can have the nose or the eyes being just uh, um, perfectly sharp but having the ears uh, just let's say out of focus uh, being in the blur and to have a, a good scan you need to have a very long depth of field, meaning that the distance of parts which are in focus need to be as big as possible. Because if I go back on just my face, it's a little bit too big. Um, 
you see, I need to have my ears and my nose being in focus. If I taking some, I'm taking some photo where my eyes are just on focus and not the ears, the scan will be very blurry as well. And you see, this is uh, uh, the background is not so sharp, but it's not that blurry. Um, then to understand that, let me go back to this depth of field uh, uh, simulator. Oh, I need to consider the chat. Sorry. Okay, that way. Then, for your camera, you need to find the good, uh, of course, uh, uh, um, distance uh, for your, your lens. Uh, and I took my photo at 50 millimeters, which is uh, something which is good because you don't have too much distortions. Because if you are choosing a wide angle lens like that, you see on the background, you start to have some very wide distortions, which is not very good. And if you are going more in uh, a, a telephoto, you will have very, uh, um, sorry, what can I say that? Um, your perspective will be very, uh, let's say, collapsed. Uh, 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 then you will have almost no deformation. Then something like 50 millimeters is great. 50, let's say 60, 70, but try to go don't go too much. And then on top of that, you have this uh, aperture, which is a blade uh, inside of your lens, which makes uh, less or more light uh, hitting the sensor for the amount of time you are taking your photos. And the smaller the value is, the wider the, the opening, the aperture will be, then the more light. And by doing that, you will make your background, or I mean, this distance, uh, um, way more closer and you see just at uh, at the bottom of this simulator you see right now where is the camera where is the subject and what you see here is this distance of where your photography will be sharp then you see if you are just oops sorry just reducing this aperture then meaning more light you will have very, very uh, a sh uh, a small distance for your uh, uh, depth of field. Then the wider, the better it is. And when I took my photo, I think I took them at F11 or F13. Then you see, I have a wider uh, uh, depth of field. Then like that, your subject is uh, uh, more um, uh, than unfocused and uh, sharper. The only problem you have to, 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 to consider as well is of course your distance if you are moving too far too close and the closer will be your aperture sorry for all this technical stuff but the less light you will have then you need to have a lot of light coming from the outside or then you need to increase the uh, uh, iso uh, and then you start to have photos which are very uh, uh, dark or with a lot of noise and this is a kind of difficult balance to find. Uh, that's why having a lot of light is very, very important. Then you see I was outside, my ISO was very low, then not a lot of noise. You see it was at F13 and uh, uh, 200, uh, one 200th, uh, sorry, uh, uh, seconds per photo and all of them. And after for the editing, I almost did nothing except, you see, for this setting, this is a highlight. I reduce the highlight and increase the light for the shadows. Then it makes my photo with less contrast, making uh, everything uh, more visible for the scan that has. Because the photo I have right now is really for my scan, not to do a nice photography. Then that's why it's very important to take some photos. But to be honest, this is a lot of technical stuff I'm explaining right now, but it's very important if you want to do very clan, uh, clan sorry, uh, clean scans. Then at the end, what I did was just uh, editing uh, just one photo, doing a synchronization to have the same setting for everything, and I export that as, uh, it was a JPEG file at 100% of compression. If you want to have something very clean, just avoid JPEG file. But for what I want to do, it was fine. So let me just look at um, the chat. Sorry, I'm talking, this is very technical, not very uh, visual, I'm sorry. Um, 
Yeah, you know, Doug, uh, about this rig I was just uh, showing before with all this DSLR. Of course, if you want to do some professional work for, let's say, the cinema, VFX, or video games industries, of course, you need to have a lot of DSLR, but you don't need to have uh, this high-end DSLR. Just the cheapest DSLR, which is able to take um, uh, uh, photos in row with the regular 50 uh, millimeter lenses are far enough. And of course, the more DSLR you have, the better quality you have, but just an array of 20 or, or, or 30 cameras will provide you a lot, I mean, something which is already very good. And I have three DSLR, in fact, to be honest, at home, uh, two recent one and an old one. And I did just form test a kind of array where I have one um, uh, remote, which was tr uh, triggering the three cameras at the same time. And when you are doing just a scan of, let's say, of someone like a character by taking three photos by three photos at the same time, you are doing that way more faster than you are reducing the movement of the subject and it produces a very, very good result. Then just three cameras change a lot of things. Then if you can do an array, just a vertical array of, let's say, six or seven cameras by two, then 14 cameras, something on the uh, on the support with some wheels and rotate around, you can do a lot of photos at the same time. Of course, this is not just like that to have all your photos taken just in one click, but it's fast enough to do a lot of uh, uh, very good scan. Anyway, uh, and yes, my camera was, my, my camera, my wife was using the DSLR, I have no problem with that. Um, Ah uh, yes, uh, also, yes, you can do for um, uh, the photogrammetry, for the, the scan. Uh, it's not possible really for a character because it's not fast enough. Uh, but for the object, you can have just a base which rotates with, and then having a setup which uh, making the, 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 the process easier. But I don't really do object, I, I do more characters. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Antoine. Bonjour de France, donc et pas de Belgique. Um... Ok, uh... no Antoine, you know Roussel is a very very common name, then there is, I don't know, thousands and thousands of Roussel in France, <laughs> it's not a relative, ok, um, and Gary knows he didn't do the Matrix bullet uh, effect with something like that, yes, it... Yes and no. I mean, it was a series of of cameras which were the one after the others, and taking all the photos, then the one after the others, and it's not really like three really scan. Um, anyway, okay. Let me close that. Let me close this Death or Field Simulator. Just type on Google Doff. Uh, death or field simulator and we'll have these kind of things just play with that because to be honest um, if you are looking for photography this is the best way to see which lens will do what in terms of results because uh, if you have a lens which is a zoom or a focal uh, uh, sorry a, a fixed aperture lens which is the best, <laughs> uh, you won't have the same result at all. Uh, I took my photo with my um, 24 70 millimeter lens uh, at 2.8, um, but like I said again, a, a 50 millimeters, the cheapest one from Canon or Nikon, let's say, as a brand is way enough to do 3D scans. Okay, then um, now I'm in uh, Agisoft, uh, which is a Russian software. Um, then this software is available in two versions, uh, the regular one and the professional one. And the regular one uh, is way enough for, let's say, 95% of the user who want to do uh, a 3D scan, who are not, let's say, a company doing 3D scan on a daily basis, but people like me. Um, Joseph Dress and myself, we purchase this software something at the same time almost um, and the price is something like $179 or uh, $169 but less than $200 uh, for this software and like I said with a cheap camera, a cheap lens and this software you can do a lot of scans and I'm thinking about people doing let's say environments if you want to scan I don't know some trees or some, some rocks or, or buildings or old stones uh, you can do so much things and after of course bring back everything back in uh, in ZBrush. Then 
I won't explain in detail the software also because you see I'm talking a lot and not doing a lot of things in 3D right now. Um, you have, of course, a lot of videos uh, about this software uh, online. It's pretty simple, at least for the basic. Then you need to adjust a chunk, and in the chunk, you will import a series of photos. You can build multiple chunks if you want, and after you can also, uh, uh, you can um, at the end, align all of these chunks. Then if you want to work in multiple parts. Uh, on the technical part of things, just in terms of the hardware for this software, it's using for some computations a graphic card. Um, and I strongly advise you uh, OpenCL compatible compatible cards and mainly of course they are all now uh, compatible with OpenCL uh, but mainly NVIDIA cards. I didn't try with the latest um, uh, AMD card um, but uh, at least I'm very happy with uh, uh, with NVIDIA so far. Um, then of course a lot of memory, a lot of RAM and big graphic card. Then first thing is in this chunk you will add some photos and let me go back in my scan. Uh, oops, not this one. Um, this one, exports. You see this is all my photos that I exported as a JPEG file. Then you can select everything. You open, oops, I have a just kill my ears. Um, there are some potential issues uh, because some photos have been taken in the uh, portrait and others in landscape orientation. And um, for the DSLR, it know which type of photo it is. Then I don't have a problem. But if you are taking so if you are taking some photo with your cell phone, it may be an issue with that. Then it's very important to export the photo in the good orientation and not being an EXIF setting inside of the file uh, to say, okay, rotate or not the photo. For me, this is okay. Um, then the first process will be for this kind of stuff is to align all the photo. Aligning meaning, okay, where the photo has been taken in the 3D space, in the real world, just to find where is a good position. Um, and I think this is, for me, this is the beauty of this scan stuff, being able just to find where I took the photo. Uh, and it's working from what I understood. It's very similar to the tracking solution for uh, compositing. It tried to find some uh, similarities between the photos, adding some trackers, and then just matching them and like that, being able to uh, find uh, what where uh, where where look at its uh, uh, photos. Um, then um, I will do very quick and dirt stuff so far, and I will load the file after because it's really taxing on the computer, and I'm afraid about the stream quality. <laughs> then I have my chunk with all my photos inside. You see, I have my cameras, zero photo. Uh, over 82 are, I mean, are aligned and no photos. Then right click and you have the process. And then the first thing to do, everything is gray out except align the photo. And at this stage, you can just leave the default setting except the, ac the accuracy. You have from highest to the lowest. What I'm doing um, when I, I'm able to test my scan with my laptop and things like that, uh, I'm trying to do very quick and dirt scan because I want to see the result. Is it okay or not okay? Something is wrong, not wrong. Why? Because the higher, the highest is the quality, the slower the process will be. And I, when I mean slow, for some scan, it can take hours and hours, something like 6, 10, 12 hours to compute um, your model. Then that's why if you launch a process and you wait for 12 hours to see that everything is just garbage, uh, you will lose a lot of time. Then by the lowest, you launch the process. And I don't know if the stream will be fine. During that, I will look at the chat. Um, OK. Um, then. Uh, just to answer one question from Gary, maybe stupid, but couldn't you just film, uh, which is of course not a photo per second, and have the camera fixed and instead move yourself around to have every angle? Uh, no, first thing, a uh, movie won't work 
just because most of the camera are 30 frames per second and of course now you can shoot at uh, uh, 60 or 120 or even more but the faster you shoot the uh, most of the time the slower the resolution is and on top of that you will it require more and more light then meaning that you may have more and more uh, motion blur on your images and if you want to do that you need to have very specific camera to do that uh, which first doesn't work and on the other side of thing is yes you can have a static camera and moving to, sorry sorry turning around the camera the problem also about that is if you are doing this kind of things that uh, when rotating you you need to be sure about not moving at all when you are rotating because if you slightly move from back or, or front of back or the side or just moving a shoulder or your head then your model i mean all the photo uh, will be misaligned then it will be very problematic then it doesn't work at all then movie at least for now it doesn't work at all okay then right now you see i did this computation in low quality and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven photos, which doesn't work. When you put something in low quality, you need to have a very, very good scan to have a result. Let me just now load this one. Okay. Uh, I did the same process. This is exactly the same photos. There is no differences. The only thing is when I computed my process but aligning photo i did that in the high mode not the highest just the high mode okay and you see now for the camera the alignment of the cameras i have 82 cameras aligned over 82 um, then all my camera have been aligned and if you are just zooming in and out you see right now you can see my face like that my, my body my the top part of my body and you see all the cameras all around then you see the three circles that my wife did around me and you see that if i'm going on top that some series of photos have been done more in uh oh how do you say that in english um in burst mode if i'm not wrong uh then it's not very consistent uh also the distance is not the same if you look about my sphere you see she's been very uh, way more closer than uh, to me when she was on my back than on the front then it's also a risk about having some parts not being in focus and also the mistake she did and that you can see in in the photos if you remember uh, i was slightly blur blurred because she took the photo while walking and not stopping taking a photo walking taking a stopping taking a photo she was walking and if, even at one uh 200 uh, uh per second for uh for each photo which quite which is not that uh, slow but fast enough there is still a bit of blur then that's why you need to be very accurate um, you need to train yourself i way more trained than her uh, about doing that um, anyway you see right now the first step of the process is to uh, um, align all of these photos and if you take a look let me zoom in you see we have right now a kind of evaluation of what is the scan and you see there is right now here a kind of ghost of my head and this ghost is because there is at least one or two photos which may be close together at least a series of photos which are not well aligned then perhaps at the highest mode it will fix the problem to be honest i'm i'm a lot honest when <laughs> because I'm, I'm always saying to be honest sorry um i'm not looking about very accurate stuff then as soon as you have this scan and you see right now I have a, a big big part around me which is a part of my house uh, there is a part of my car behind um, then because when I ask the software to compute uh, the, the this alignment of photo it build um, uh, uh, cloud points uh, point clouds cloud point sorry 
yeah, point cloud uh, of my model, but it doesn't know where I need to stop. That's why you have this kind of boundary box that you can resize. Oops, sorry, I don't like the navigation in this software. Then you have this tool where you can say, okay, I just want to work on this box. Then when you will do your computation, it will just work on this volume and won't consider what is outside. Then it will avoid having extra computing of your model, which takes, again, like I said, a lot, a lot of time. Okay. You can hide as well the cameras to have a better view. And that. Then the next step that I won't do, sorry, because again, this is very long. Uh, on my chunk, I will do process and I will, uh, you can optimize the camera, but for what I want to do, I don't care. I will build the dense cloud, meaning that based on now this camera, which has been well aligned, uh, that I define this area, you can ask about uh, computing really uh, uh, very, very accurate, uh, 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 a lot of points, uh, cloud of points uh, on your model. And again, the highest is the quality, the longest it is. And there is a big difference between high and ultra high. Ultra high, you need to have very, very good computer with multiple cards, uh, uh, eventually multiple Xeon processor. I mean, you, you need to have a lot of power for that. Um, and after you have some featuring about the photos, uh, you can look about the documentation because for what you want to do, some of them may be better. Then I won't do it, I'm sorry. And I will switch to this uh, second chunk that you see here. Okay, uh, this is what I did uh, uh, before. You see, I computed uh, this um, this chunk with the high with, well, sorry with, with the highest uh, with the high quality, and this is what you see right now. This is just points. You see, when I'm navigating on my model, you see, and based on that, the software will compute polygons on my model. And something I didn't explain before, when you are doing scan data, you need to uh, take in consideration that some surfaces, type of surfaces, doesn't work well. And the first thing is everything which is reflection, refraction, and transparency. All this kind of stuff, because it's based on light, doesn't work very well. And also stuff which are very dark, are dark and shiny, which are the hairs. Then luckily it was not that bad, but sometimes you have a lot of holes uh, uh, on your model. And you see, I have, I think, one photo which is just upside down. Anyway, and what you can do is, okay, let me just go back to this chunk. And sorry, I, I will do anyway a, a quick um, scan. You see, this is right now the dense cloud I computed with everything around. And that's why you see it's very important to reduce the building box if you don't want to compute everything else. Then at this stage, you say, oh, okay, uh, I build everything, but I want to uh, remove some part. Then you can use the marquee tools and say, okay, I don't need all of that. You can select, you press the delete key Let me remove all the stuff which is not needed. This is in fact what I did for the other chunk, which is the, the, the edited version, as you can see. Okay, let me rotate. And it's not really needed what I'm doing right now because you see all this stuff is outside of the box that I did before, but just to show you that you can remove some parts and to avoid some extra polygons. And again, for this project, what I need is my head only. I don't need everything else. And you can remove all the bottom part like that. And when you're done, you can doing the same thing as before, process, and you can build the mesh and 
of course, source data is the dense cloud. You can define the number of polygons that you want to have, which is 60,000, which is not that much, but of course, based on what you want to do, uh, you can change the values to be something higher. Or, of course, if you have very, very high quality scans with a lot of photo well aligned, you can say, okay, custom, and I want to have, I don't know, this is triangles, okay? Let's say two, uh, two millions of triangles, okay? And of course, for this model, I did it. Then this is what is generated by the software. What you see right now is a result of the scan. And as you can notice, this is very, very, very noisy. You see, this is uh, this part is better than the other side, but this is very noisy. Of course, increasing the camera alignment, removing probably the two or three cameras which are not aligned very well, uh, and increasing the computation, quality computation of the dense cloud will improve things, but not that much because my photo, I was moving, my wife was not very used, but doing this kind of series of photography, I've moved, the, the sun was very uh, aggressive and I, 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 I green, if I'm not wrong, um, for my eye, then that's why it's not very good. But again, I want to have the shape. Uh, on top of that, you have, um, you see the uh, vertex color, which is added based on the photography. And at the end, if you want, you can process to build the texture, which will work on um, self-generated UVs or if you are working with ZBrush, you can import back a model made in ZBrush or on other software with clean UVs and then using these UVs to reproject the texture, which is the best thing to do. But for now, I don't care. And then I generated the texture. And this is what you see. Uh, sorry, what you see. This is on screen the result you see with the texture. And of course, this is not very nice because my photos are, are not very good. But the texture already gives you a very nice uh, evaluation. And you see this projection, this is probably some textures, some photos which are not well aligned. Uh, but again, it was quick and to build a helmet on top of his head, this is way enough. And even the hairs, uh, you see have this kind of bulge on top, this kind of inflate areas. My hairs are not that much on the top. I will clean that in the brush just to fit the helmet. And at the end, when you're done, you can just export your model directly to uh, uh, your software with all the common uh, file format. Uh, okay, let me look at... Um, okay, yeah, uh, Doug... Uh, hi, Doug. <laughs> you can um, use some masking on the photos, meaning that you can define an area uh, that you want to keep on your photo and let's say hiding everything else. Um, like that, you can remove for, on all the photos uh, all the unnecessary elements. Why I didn't do that? Because again, this is a quick scan uh, um, and I'm not looking for something which is accurate. I mean, accurate to have my, my head, but if there is one or two millimeters or if it's noisy, I don't care. And the other reason, it takes a lot of time to create the mask on 82 photography. And that's why you don't do that. And yes, you uh, can use polarized lenses, uh, filters uh, on top of your lenses to uh, avoid all the specular aspects. Um, doesn't fix the eyes, if I'm not wrong, because I'm not so good with polar polarized lens uh, uh, filters for the 3D scan. Um, but yes, it's, it's advised to uh, use uh, uh, filters like that. But again, this is for very accurate stuff. Okay, then I exported my uh, my model and now let's open ZBrush. Come on ZBrush. Feel free to ask your question of course as usual. Uh, okay, I will upload them. Um, my uh, st my star. I will display the floor uh, for the. Oh, I'll do that later. Uh, let me just remove for the uh, document the background. It will be better for the stream. Uh, okay, then I have a poly mesh 3D which is loaded, and now I want to import this scan. Then I'm going to import and in my Karen folder and. 
uh, no, I put that inside of the brush, scan the brush. Okay, then I have this obg file that I'm importing. And this is what I have inside of the brush. Then let me just go on the other side, upside down. I will switch to the skin chat for material. Okay. And I will import at the same time the texture. Then let me import my texture. And you see, this is a kind of, um, uh, not random, but uh, not a texture that you can edit in Photoshop right away. Okay, my texture has been uh, has been imported, and you know that in ZBrush, you need to flip vertically the texture. Then I select it, and in the texture palette, I click on this flip V vertical to flip my texture. You see the preview; it's uh, yeah, <laughs> no way to do that. And in my texture map palette, I will select my texture, and you see this is me <laughs> with a texture inside of ZBrush, uh, and you see the light. You see already the light, the shadows. That's why you need to avoid this harsh shadows when you are working. Um, you can flip to the uh, flat color if you want. Like that, you won't have the shadows from the brush, but the shadow from the texture. And the first thing I will do inside of the brush will be to um, rotate my model to put it on the good position and the good location. Uh, because I will work many with the symmetry, I will need also to re um, to redo the symmetry, let's say, of the model, uh, which of course is not something natural because my face is not symmetrical, but for the process, this is what is needed. And I'm going to my rotate, and let's do that roughly that way. Okay, I would like to, uh, I think rotating like that. Let me just go on top. It's very difficult to to do this uh, vertical rotation uh, on a model. And also my face is not very uh, symmetrical like everybody, which is not very easy. I think it's a little bit too much. And of course, when you have a clean scan, it's better. And another thing, sorry, I forgot to say is, in my chair, sometimes you're not really just uh, um, well aligned vertically. Sometimes you're just more on the side and things like that. Then it's not very easy. Okay. Another thing I will do is uh, I will unify because I don't care. I wouldn't go back in the 3D scan software. Uh, I will stay inside of the brush. And uh, sorry, not unified. Um, deformation unified just to be sure that I will align everything inside of the brush and at the good size. Uh, just a trick, I want to align my model to the center of my scene. Why? Because again, I will try to redo the symmetry. To do that, I will switch to transpose and I will just pick a point which is very, very close to, you see, the vertical axis like that and with shift key i'm able you see like that to draw a vertical uh, uh, point like that i know that i'm not aligned at all then oops sorry ah i was ready to say something not nice okay like that i have my uh, orientation i can move you see my model that I will need to rotate as well because I think it should be more that way and it's important to take uh, enough time to do this kind of things um, because you will see after when I will re-symmetrize if you it's not very good you will have a lot of uh, deformation of the symmetry and it's it may be tricky to fix and spend some time on that. Um, now the next step will be to scale my model at the real size. I mean, to be sure, it's the size that I have in the brush will be the same as my head. Um, on top of that, uh, I will work with um, uh, um, a scale factor. I will multiply or divide my model to fit more the ZBrush universe. If you followed my previous stream with my figurine, I've worked at a hundredth uh, uh, of the size, a hundredth smaller because I was in millimeter. 
and I will do the same. I will try to fit uh, uh, inside of the brush uh, uh, a scale. And to do that, what I did was to be in front of a mirror, which is not very complicated, and with a ruler taking the distance between the uh, 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 outer distance of my eyes between these two points, sorry of my glasses, um, which are here and here, and then being sure that this distance is 10 centimeters, which is approximately perhaps one or two millimeters uh, of, uh, of, um, uh, of gap, let's say, but um, uh, I have 10 centimeters of distance between my two eyes. And another distance uh, I, was, uh, I looked at was the distance between um, the foundation. I don't know how to say that in English, but uh, for the nose, you have this, um, this part, which is uh, uh, the angle uh, between the forehead and the nose, uh, which is uh, say the root uh, of, uh, of the nose, which is just between the two eyes and uh, this part here, which is 15 centimeters. Then like that, I have two measurements to see if my scale is a good one. Then to do that, uh, I'm taking my uh, scale. And again, with transpose, I will try to find what is uh, middle point like that and with my transpose line oops sorry you have the units on top and what I want to have is to have between this point and this point here the limit having half of this 10 centimeter which is five centimeters and because I will work with small values to fit the brush size I will not work in uh, centimeters but uh, a tenth of centimeters meaning that I don't want to have five here and five here but I will put 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 then let me pick my circle and you see on top I have my values of transpose units and I have 0 0.5 roughly now, if I enable my symmetry, like that, you are able to scale your model, you see, until that my boundaries here are just, I mean, the boundaries of my eyes are on the good location. Then if I'm going on the other side, I should have roughly, you see, 0 0.5 on this area. I think I'm not very well aligned. Okay. And what now I, it should be the good side. And let me look at the distance between this part and this one, which is, ah, uh, uh, should be 15, should be that way. Oh no, it was that part because I, I look at this front part. You see the size should be okay. And that's why it's important to have some good uh, measurements. Um, it's not very easy to do because, of course, our face and head have some depth, but again, it gives you some good uh, uh, idea about uh, how is your face. Um, next thing to do is doing some editing on the scan. And for that, I will, you see, I have some holes. I will fill the holes the same as below. and. Again, I will redo the symmetry. Then let me just load another file that I did before. Uh, no, it was a project. Let me lower the volume of my computer. Okay. Come on. Okay, then what you see, I have multiple sub tools. Okay, then I did something in a slightly different order because the first thing I did, in fact, was to uh, slightly clean the scan. This is what I will redo anyway, uh, uh, the process. And you see, I redid the symmetry. I mean, I redid, I did the symmetry of my model and after I did some, uh, some cleaning. And after I did the scaling. Okay, then just let go back to this one. And for the symmetry, let me duplicate. I remove uh, the texture poly painting and uh, what I did, I should have <laughs> closed my model before. Uh, too bad, anyway. For the symmetry, this is simply a mirror and weld, nothing else. Then to do that, let me remove my texture because it will just kill my UVs. 
uh, then let me just texture off like that simply you go in geometry modify topology and mirror and weld and you see that way from the x axis it goes on the other side mirror and weld and you see the result then you may have some differences but not that much and i think in fact i'm quite good at this stage you see i have some rotation of the head but by doing that i have the other side and of course by doing that i have uh, everything which is aligned for the ears and again this is a helmet and i have some gap between the helmet and my head and uh, and i may put some spacer i guess in the helmet for uh, uh, the, the building process and this is okay and now I have some issues. I have these holes and my scan is very, very not bad, but some part like the nose, I need to fix that. And again, I don't want to do something which is nice. I just want to do something which is practical to build my, my uh, helmet. Um, then the next thing I will do, and I think I have the problem somewhere, or perhaps I did it before. Ah, yes, I think, no. Let me, I think I cleaned the model before, unfortunately. Um, then I'm going always in polygroups and I'm doing an auto groups and I don't see that ah, too bad. Oh yes. Because I clean quite enough my model and you see by doing this auto groups, it will look inside of ZBrush for your model and each time there is a different shell, it will create a different polygroup per shell. And when you are doing 3D scan, a lot of time you have these small, let's say, particles of polygons flying around your model and you need to remove them. So the best thing to do is to, oops, sorry, uh, is to do an auto groups, which may take some time if you have a lot of these uh, uh, floating shells uh, on top of your model. And you see, I have at least two of them inside of my model. You see, I have this one here and I saw another one. Oh, you see all of them, one, two, three, four, five at least, uh, which are problematic. Then go back in draw mode and control shift press, you click on this polygroup, which we just keep this one visible and hide everything else. And now I can go in geometry and delete hidden. Let me just invest. And you see this is all the straight uh, shells uh, of my model, then I need to clean all of them. Then I'm inverting my visibility and delete hidden and now I have, let's say, a clean model in terms of topology. Okay, then before closing my model, I will hide again this part. Oops, sorry. This one, just of something which is just flat, like that. And again, delete hidden. And now I can do my close holes. And you see, I have a closed model, except that on this area, you see the closed hole is not very nice. Not nice because my topology is a kind of, uh, of weird. Then at this stage, you can finally take your pen and starting to uh, uh, clean your model, smoothing. Uh, another thing that you may notice, which may happen with scan data, is that you, have, you see these vertices, which are just alone and there is no way to smooth them. You see, my smoothing doesn't work because you have this, uh, you have a triangle which just one vertex which is on top. And the brush by default, the smooth brush, if you go in the brush palettes and in the uh, smooth, smooth, where are you, my uh, smooth brush modifier, you have the minimum connected points. Then if there is less than three connected points to one vertex, the smooth brush won't work. And if you go back, let's say just to one, now it should work. You see, now all these points has been smooth. And it's uh, very important to, uh, to know this functionality of being able to uh, uh, change the number of vertices uh, which are connected. Because if you don't do that, you will have all these small vertices, which may be problematic after for some other operations. Then, 
let me go to this nose, nose, sorry. Then I will just refine my nose with the symmetry. It will be way more better. You see, that way. My idea is not to do something which is clean. Uh, I know that I don't have a small nose, uh, but I want to know where it is. And again, this is just for references. Uh, I will just increase a little bit the ears. Let me ch change off material. Okay, that way. And yes, this is me. And say, oh, I need to scull the eyes and stuff like that. Uh, do we really need to scull the eyes? We know where they are. I know that my eyes will have been closed, but they are roughly on this area. Then when I will do the visor, I mean, the, 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 it's a the window inside of my helmet, I need to think that it needs to be aligned with this area. The next thing I will do will be to clean a little bit the hairs to reduce them. Why? Because uh, in my, I mean, when I'm, let's say, uh, in, without nothing on my head, your hairs, like everybody, are, let's say, kind of flying if you have long hairs, um, then on an helmet, they will just uh, be flattened on top of your head. Then I have too much volume for my head right now. Then you can start to smooth if you want. Or another thing to do is simply to sculpt just to uh, having a head which is more, uh, um, let's say, having a regular shape. That's why when you are doing 3D scan, most of the time for the hairs, you are, I don't know the name in English, I'm sorry for my lack of vocabulary, uh, but putting some clothes when you are doing some ski, uh, sky, uh, skiing, uh, uh, going in the mountains just to protect your head and uh, like that you are able to flatten your, your hairs and having different colors which uh, provide better result for the scan. Okay, now let's just go back to my sub tools and going to my resulting scan. Then this scan, let me hide the other one. Uh, let's work on that one. Then this scan is at the good size. Uh, then I did the scaling like before and I just smooth my model. Something you can do as well is I don't care about the topology. I don't care about the number of polygons since it's a reference. I will switch to Dynamesh and Geometry and Dynamesh and let's say 128 should be uh, many polygons? Uh, I will increase a little bit 196 let's say uh, 200 okay then 2000 vertices then like that I have enough points and it will be way more easier to sculpt no more triangles I will look at the chat in a few seconds. That. The idea is just to reduce a little bit the volume, of course, mainly on the top. You don't need to spend a lot of time on that, uh, of course. Then what I will do now will be to um, build a little bit the boundaries of the forehead, uh, forehead, sorry, and the hairs. Um, I will use my damp soda brush, like I have a kind of, of mask. The idea is just to put some kind of landmarks, nothing else, just to see where are these parts to give more volume. Okay. And to be honest, I, I will refine uh, all this thing a little bit uh, later. Yeah, I need to go to the... Um, oh, what is the name? To cut your hairs. Uh, anyway. Uh, clay build up. Oh, 
okay dynamesh and it should be okay that whoops not on the side It's important to spend also a little bit of time, not that much, but enough to be sure that it should be okay. Because if you don't do that, you will have some issues. And what I will build uh, uh, almost now, before starting ready to mold, is to create a kind of very quick template that I will 3D print and just to see if it fits my head, nothing else. Uh, that's why I prefer working with low topology than just Dynamesh for this kind of shapes um, because it takes way more time to clean these raw polygons. Okay, and uh, let me save that as. Uh, can clean. Okay, let me look at the chat. Sorry, I was talking a lot. Um, <laughs> thank you, Doug. Uh, you know, you won't find a lot of stuff in my head. I'm sorry. Uh, hi, Seagull Crush. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, ah, for the smooth brush, it's not really a trick, it's just a setting in the brush palette. Uh, you have this smooth brush modifier and then you have the minimum number of connected points. And this is very important. By default it's at 3, which is uh, enough for regular triangles. But for scan data or some closed uh, hole sometime, or even with the result of Boolean meshes, uh, you may have some triangles which have some one vertex connected to nothing, in fact. I mean, no other polygons except itself, and it will be possible to, to smooth. And this is the same thing when you have, let's say, a grid, and you try to smooth the corner of the grid, it doesn't work, because this corner, this polygon, just connected to uh, two edges and nothing else. And that's why you need to change this setting. Um... Yeah, this uh, this uh, bald bolt. I'm not sure for the accent caps that you put on the head. Of course, this is what you, you need to do for uh, doing scans and uh, all this kind of stuff. But again, the idea is to show what you can do with without a lot of things. Yes, I have a DSLR camera, but I mean, again, uh, any kind of camera that you can put in manual mode. I insist on that on manual mode, not in full automatic. Uh, could work to do a quick scan. Uh, photo scan is not that expensive. Of course, we are inside of the brush, and you can do this. In fact, this full project you can do that with not that money, and of course, you can do multiple models better than that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, skeptic. Um, okay. Uh, now then, what I will do is um, a kind of preparation work. Sorry, I'm still not at the helmet, but again, it's it's very important to consider some uh, some things. It, I, I will build a shape all around my head like that, just doing the boundary, and the same on the other side, a kind of strip of polygon with some volume. The idea is to print this shape and just see after if it just fit my head, and if it's fitting perfectly, then. I'm sure that my head will be at the good size. This is pretty easy uh, uh, to just to check. And it's better to check now with this kind of temporary model than printing your model and after when you're done with assembling everything, see that ah, doesn't fit. Okay. Um, then I will be the strip of, uh, of polygon. I will do something very, uh, very simple. Um, let me insert. Uh, uh, okay. This star. Uh, let me switch to transparency and initialize quick cube of one by one by one quick cube. I can switch back to the gizmo. And you will see I'm not looking at something which is quite big. 
see. You will understand very soon what I'm doing. Okay, and let me pick my Z molar brush. Why I'm in why my mesh is transparent. Um, draw, draw. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway. Um, and on my head slide, where is my side? I will edit all of that, of course, after, but. It's a very spectacular <laughs> model. Okay, and now I'm able to select that, moving. I'm trying to be close, but not that close. I guess now you understand what I'm doing. Oops. I don't want to rotate, I want to move. And same thing on the other side. And you see the slide, let me just giving some angle. Of course, not exactly how it needs to be done, but at least. And same as before, moving. Okay, this is just a template, nothing else, uh, but it doesn't touch anything. Then if I'm printing that, I should be able to uh, just fit uh, this model. And if I'm able to do that, then I should be able to do the whole uh, helmet. Then let me rename that as template. Um, and when I will print that, I will print that upside down, meaning that I will print from the bottom to the top. Um, oh, let me just look at something. Let me look at something, sorry. Just a second. Ah, shit. <laughs> sorry. Um. Simplify. Okay, I will see that just after. Okay, sorry. Uh, rename. Okay, template. And now I will start the uh, uh, helmet. I just need to look at the time. Uh, for 
this template, I will just go back a little bit after because I need to see this program with Simplified 3D, Prime of License. Um, I will start now the helmets, but for sure I will print this model before going in splitting the part. I mean, uh, until I'm able to uh, uh, change the proportions and the scale, I'm fine. But as soon as I will start to add some details or building multiple parts, I need to be sure that sorry, this part will fit perfectly then if I need to rescale my head or not. Not my head, but I mean the, the, the shape to be sure it will fit. Sorry. Um, is it working now? Why it doesn't work? Okay, now it works. Yes, no, I know I need to upgrade to simplify 3D4. Uh, sorry, let me just show you that <laughs> what you don't see on the other screen. Uh, yeah, I just forgot to, uh, um, because this is another session of my computer, not my main session on Windows. Uh, I need to um, just um, reactivate and uh, doing setup of uh, Simplify 3D. Uh, this Simplify 3D, just to explain things, this is a software uh, designed for FDM printers, these 3D printers which are um, using some filaments made uh, of ABS or PLA or other material, which is just fused by a hot hand. Um, and of course you have a path uh, just defining the shape of uh, each layer that you need to print and each printer uh, is able to work with uh, a lot of software which are open source free etc and um, simplify 3d is uh, i think the only paid slicer uh, then doing this step of slicing and defining the path that your uh, uh, printer head will do and yeah, it's, it costs some money but this is the best software to do these kind of things then uh, I just need to define my printer, which is a Ultimaker 2 plus extended. Next, finishing. Okay, this is this software, but I will just go back to uh, this software uh, just after. So because I wanted to be sure it was working uh, before the end of the, um, the stream. Okay, uh, then I have my template that I can just hide for now and I go back to my uh, head. Uh, let me just remove the grid because uh, I don't need the grid anymore. And let me bring back my references. Okay. Then this helmet. To be honest, it's not easy to find. You see how, again, I said to be honest. Um, Unfortunately, it's very difficult to find real and official references of the Caloran uh, helmet. Uh, I look a lot on the internet. Uh, I have some books like the uh, Force Awaken uh, illustration book, uh, uh, which is very nice. The art of uh, Star Wars, uh, The Force Awakens. Um, I look on internet, etc. Then it's very, very difficult. And this one seems to be a helmet uh, that you can buy, which is not the official one. But so far, it looks very, very close to the movie one, but not that much. Uh, and even in the movie, you see the surface is uh, more smoother. And also, these uh, uh, details, these lines are not. It seems to be not the same on the left and right side. Um, yeah, it's it's very, very difficult to find. And this is what I have so far and what I will try to work on. Um, I'm, I, will, I will try to be as close as possible to the helmet from the movie, but I won't do something which is screen accurate. I have no way and of course, perhaps not the time, but trying at least to have the best shape. And of course, the idea is to show you the process how to create your own helmets from scratch, 
with the help of 3D scan and with the 3D printing. And uh, the last session will be again, like I did for the figurine, probably some um, post process work with sanding, which material you use, which type of sanding paper, uh, how to glue things, and I hope how to paint, but I'm not sure yet. Okay. Uh, Genki Des, Genki Des, uh, Seagull Crush. <laughs> uh, yep. Um, then for these references, then what I will try to do first is to define the location of the main parts. Um, I don't really know, to be honest, how I will build some parts. Uh, this is really uh, on the fly. I, except the scan, I prepared nothing and of course these references. Um, then I will try to fit something like that and I will put in the background, uh, I guess this image, it seems to be the same. I think this is the same. I will put that one because it seems to be very well aligned then to have at least something on the side. I have no clean front view. This one is a bit from the top. I I wasn't able to find a front view. Then for these references, I need to change a bit the shape of my head. I think the hairs are way too, too big on this area. Uh, okay, then uh, for my references, let me go in this draw palette. And for the side, let me, oh, sorry, I need to put my grid on and no, sorry, I never know which grid is the good one, this one. And let me lo load uh, my texture, texture imports, Caroline references, and I think it was this one. Open. Why? Oh, sorry, okay. Then let me flip like that and let me change the scale. And vertical offsets. You see with the hairs because I think right now I should be close to the good size. Um, because you see, you have the uh, visor <laughs> uh, on this area, which is for the eyes. And I think this is a little bit too, I need to, okay, like that. And you see my hairs doesn't fit. I need to flatten my head, uh, my hair, sorry, a little bit more. It should be okay, but if I'm going too much, too close to my nose, uh, it will hit. Um, then I need to, I think it's something more like that, but it's, you see, it's very difficult to, to find and evaluate. It seems to be too far for me, uh, something like that. But at least uh, I have the good size, which seems to be fit for the back part. Uh, where if you have something, some clothes on the, uh, this area, no, it, it seems to fit. For me, it seems to be okay. Um, let me change some settings for the grid. Uh, you see, you have multiple fill modes for your model. I don't like the last uh, one, but the second one is uh, is good. Uh, ah, shit. What was the size? Ah, <laughs> yeah, three, sorry. And modifiers, another frame. P line, I don't care. Okay, you see, I want just to hide as much as possible the frame. Okay. And I can put the same one on the other side. Off, oh, I will stay like this. 
Okay, uh, next thing to do is to save my project like that. I have everything to set up. Oops, sorry. What? The, ah, sorry, I, I was in Japanese keyboard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, let me kill this scan. I don't need to have all of these polygons. Delete. And I did it. Okay, and let me resave to be sure it's clean. Okay, uh, so far no questions. Um, uh, Okay. Okay, then let's start with this uh, helmet. Okay, then uh, what I will try to do is let's switch to this one here. Uh, I will try to do this. Uh, let's forget about these uh, this shape, this kind of details, and the front part, more the mask part uh, for the mouth and and nose. Let's just focus on all this shape rounded on this area. I won't care about this uh, um, back side, which, we, which is just tilting on the side, just to, to be as close as possible. And for that, I will work, uh, I think, with very low polygonal model, just to be able to uh, move some vertices as much as possible. And then after I will uh, refine uh, my model. Um, yeah, I think I will start with a cube. Something which is uh, uh, simple with very few polygons. And let's uh, append uh, again a star and initialize. And I will do a two, um, oops, sorry by one, by one, quick cube, which is inside of my model. I can scale it. What I want to have is just a symmetry point, uh, like that on my model. And based on that, I will go on top and with my move brush I will of course the symmetry on start to move all of that more like that come on When it's inside, don't forget that you can put the transparency. Like this. With my Zimola brush, I will be able to insert at least some polygons to have more control. to be close to what could be the shape. And we need to insert, oh, let's go at this stage. Let's insert again just extra polygons. Move, 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 Thomas. 
Come on. What I will do is just hiding my scan, which is for me useless for now. Again, don't try to use too much points. It's not needed uh, at this stage. I think I need to go more. Yeah, it's very, very difficult to see. Uh, yeah, because my boundary is going there and there. Okay. I will add a crease just on around this area because I will apply some smoothing to have a better view of my model. But if I'm applying right now the dynamic subdivision, it will smooth. You see this bottom border, and I don't want to uh, to have it uh, just. Uh, 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 I mean, I want to keep it sharp at least for now. Um, with the Z modeler, you can. Um, sorry on the edge and uh, crease 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 edge loop complete uh, it will yeah I try to do a shimata uh, okay sorry you know when it's like that when you don't have a lot of polygons the best thing to do is to sorry because I have the software <laughs> um, Okay, I don't want to spend a lot of time then. Okay, let's. I should have done a poly loop, in fact. And now, okay, when I'm smoothing, this is what I have. And like this, I will be able to refine a little bit my vertices to fit, of course, my model. And as you know, the more polygon you have, the closer to your smoothing result you will be. Um, anyway. Okay, what I don't like is you see if I'm going on the front side, I have this kind of pinch which is which fits the top here, but not at all here. And I guess the top part is more flat, be more flat like a, f a forehead. And I guess the bottom part will be a bit more pinch, I guess, I hope. Okay. Yeah. That's why I don't like working with kind of box modeling stuff. Okay, we'll refine that just later. Okay, um, then if I'm looking at my references, we have this stuff which go down. Um, let me think, because I can go around. 
Yeah, I think I will just go down at least to do the boundaries. You see this part here, which I'm stopping right now, I will just go down until this stage, not this rounded part for now, but at least going and doing this kind of rounded part, at least. Let's try. Um, let me refine that as well. And Zimra brush, I will do an inset. Um, where are you in sets? Um, and uh, I think flat island should be okay. And I want to insert a region like this. I go back to my move brush. Uh, no, the depth is quite big. I think it's perhaps too big, but again, I will refine after. Uh, let me try something. Yeah, because, um, oh. Okay. Sorry, I'm <laughs> I'm talking to myself. <laughs> to be honest, uh, ah, I said encore. To be honest, um, I, I'm because I, I'm I'm just trying at the same time. Uh, I'm thinking and, and trying to scale them. That's why it's uh, uh, yeah. I'm, it's not that easy. I know the model is not that difficult. Uh, where are you? Oh, here. But uh, yeah, it's not that easy to uh, trying to guess some part of the model. And now we try to close uh, everything. Then again with my Zimra brush. Let me slide like I did before. Like this. And now with my move brush, I'm really lacking of polygons uh, at this stage, uh, which is uh, expected, of course. Oops. 
Let's try to rotate. Uh, I need to insert another edge loop. You see, I'm trying to avoid this uh, this part for now. I'm trying to be uh, too close to be rounded, but uh, not that much. And uh, I will add extra polygons to do this, all this part. And I think this is just a single part like that going all around like this, and which is the top of the helmet. Um, then you have this bottom part, which is behind. Of course, you have some parts which are just cut, um, but round it that way. I think I'm trying to run that way too much. Um, let me see. Come on. Uh, which other reference would be good to see? No, I think I'm trying to rotate too much. Sorry, I'm redoing <laughs> what I did before. I don't know how they are doing when they are doing all these toys uh, so quick. I mean, at the same time, uh, I mean, they are able to release uh, very quickly new toys uh, after a movie is released, and I don't know if they have access to uh, to some scan data or, or thing like that. I would be very curious to know. Uh, let me insert another edge loop Each time you are adding new points, you need to refine the curvature.
I don't want to add too much points now because I will need to uh, extrude all these polygons and if I have too many uh, uh, weird polygons I will propagate uh, this error uh, on my model which I doesn't like because it means that doing twice the same amount of work for everything else okay then the modeler um, I would go to this stage this one after another one uh, for the one below. Yes, pensez à voix haute, donc exactly this is what <laughs> I was doing before. Um... <laughs> no, I'm not sure that I will be able to stream after this, uh, just doing a stream with such helmets on my head. No, sorry, it would be very difficult. And I'm, again, I'm afraid of my voice. Uh, but yes, of, of course, I hope to be able to wear it uh, in front of you when it will be done. Um, and yes, Doug, I will do some ZBrush stuff somewhere on the helmet, of course. Um, move. Oops. Yeah, this is the beauty I think of 3D being able to, I mean now being able to build what you love, what you really enjoy. It's uh, yeah, it's. Just fantastic. It's difficult to evaluate the thickness of the helmet now. This one is quite big. In the inside part is not a big deal because it won't be visible, but uh, it can be very tricky after to clean. Yeah, you have this flat part, which go just down. Um, the other brush. See, I will need to to do this rounded part. Yeah, this area. And let me insert again some edge loop. Sorry, when you see sometimes some uh, uh, all the poly groups uh, changing to something else, it's because I'm trying to do Control Z. 
and it does a control W because I switched to Japanese keyboard which is not the same as the French keyboard <laughs> then sorry for that and for that one I will uh, do a bevel uh, my Z model right click bevel Yeah, sometimes I, I like to um, to remove the just to work with the poly frame that way, um, just to see the result uh, without any kind of shadows. Because when you are working with your topology with uh, um, like that um, with just a low polygonal model, it's not always easy to see. Uh, where are your vertices uh, because of the shadows you see with and without you see sometimes you need to rotate and I don't always like that and this way just have pure polygons and nothing else um, I don't know how is it behind this part. You see, you have uh, this part of the helmet uh, on the front part, which is more the mask for to breathe. And I don't know how far these polygons, of course, I guess they're connected, but I don't really know how exactly. And let me make that a bit closer because I will need again to add an extra row of polygons yeah at this stage this is very very low polygonal stuff yeah I prefer creating more bodies and <laughs> things like that. But I wanted to do something else, really. I'm so used about doing figurines and things like that. Of course, I really enjoy that. But uh, I wanted to do something else. And for the next project, it will be a plane, more retro futuristic plane, something like that. I don't know yet, or a kind of uh, these Japanese uh, uh, space battleships. Uh, like the Yama Yamamoto uh, uh, space battleship or thing like that. I don't know yet, but uh, I have some stuff in mind. I think it's going more outside. Let's see, I think it's going yeah, I think it's need to be more uh, um, more like a pyramid and not too much rounded that way and I think this part is going a little bit more outside more like that in fact like a real face Okay, let's go for the next uh, row of polygons and I will need to uh, do my angle uh, after. Okay, and for this one, let's, like before, picking Z model brush, Q mesh, polygroup all, because I think I just have this polygroup. Yep. And like before, I 
traffic it's going from it's difficult to know with the shadow if it's on top of not but uh, I think it's going from this side to this one and just go for the boundaries should be something like that just for the bluish purplish uh, polygons should be I think that way and now I need to clean more the inside part And I need to save. I don't want to meet my friend uh, Crashman. <laughs> it's weird that way. <laughs> uh, okay. Seagull uh, Crush, yes, I did some photogrammetry scan uh, just uh, before the stream, like you see. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's uh, it was something like uh, 40 minutes about the scan uh, at the beginning. Then you just rewatch the video, uh, you will have the, the information. Uh, okay. Uh, Trika, no, I just tried working with Maya, but uh, it's I I have a lot of difficulties to work with Maya. To be uh, at, to, I mean, it's it's not the workflow I'm used to. Uh, I spent quite some time in 3D Studio Max, which is way more my workflow. But uh, Maya, no, not at all. I mean, it's uh, Maya is not for me. It's a great software. It's not uh, that it's uh, bad or good or whatever, but uh, it's yeah, it's difficult for me. Then what I'm doing right now can be done in a lot of software, not only uh, ZBrush, of course. But I'm used to ZBrush now, and I really love the Z model. Then uh, I prefer uh, working that way. And yeah, about the Zimola, this is of course my personal point of view. Uh, you can, of course, take in consideration that I'm working at Pixelogic, which um, may be, uh, let's say, not trustable for some people, but uh, I, I've been working in, uh, before joining Pixelogic in a company doing a, a 3D modeler, a polygonal 3D modeler and NURPS based uh, uh, modeler. And yeah, I've been doing polygons by polygons modeling for years. I've been an edge modeler, polygonal by polygonal modeler. And I'm not a big fan of the box modeling stuff. Um, it's not my way of working, but, but, the but is important. Uh, it was not my way of working because at the time I was not working with ZBrush. I was working with other software and um, it's so much uh, uh, better to work with less topology constraints um, when you are working with, with ZBrush, which is for me very, very important. I spent so many years of looking at my polygons at my workflow, my flow of polygons, etc. All this kind of shit. 
<laughs> to be honest, um, which I really enjoyed. And even when I'm doing retopology now, I'm enjoying that because I'm focusing only on my flow of polygons and not um, the, um, uh, how can I say that? Um, I'm focusing on the flow of polygons and not the artistic aspects because the model is already done. And with the Z modeler is, yes, of course, I, like I'm doing right now, I'm looking at my polygons, if my curves are quite nice and stuff like that, but not as much as it was before. The reason why is um, at one stage I will do perhaps a dynamesh. I will do an automatic retopology. I will reproject my polygons and I will skirt. I will use my brush. All these kind of things where I need to have as much as possible a clean topology, but not like it was before. And because I don't care of the underlying structure, not that much. If I add extra loops of polygons, if I have one triangle here, it's not a big deal then. Of course, this is my way of thinking. Uh, let me remove my crease edges because I have them everywhere. Geometry, crease, and crease all. Uh -huh. Why? Um, then higher. Okay, I understand why I had some modification because I, I had a subdivision levels and level sorry and not not a dynamic subdivision okay then what I do is I will change the thickness of this part because if you are looking on the model, of course, you have this kind of boundary, uh, which is a cyber boundary, but the mask goes until this level. And I will go until this level and same of the, on the top. Like that, I will have the depth of my mask. See, even by doing that, it's not enough. Yeah, it's quite thick. Come on. Because if you look at the helmet almost on the front, yeah, it's difficult to say because it seems to be here, but yeah, it's. You see on this mask, it's quite thick, but not really on the side. Yeah, it's go in, you have the thickness, and then this one go inside. Ah, interesting. Thick here, not on the side. I think it's too thick. <laughs> ah, perhaps not. I think this is the same, almost the same thickness. On top and bottom, but not really on the side, which is less thick. This one is going more like that. You know what? I will do this part on the back just to have a better visual aspect of the of the helmet. Um, 
yeah, single crush, you can have, uh, you, you have multiple courses for photogrammetry. Uh, a lot of them are very, very good. Okay, I'm preparing what will be this part. And now with my Zimola brush, I'm selecting these polygons. Okay. And Q mesh a single poly. But you see, if I'm doing my extrusion, it just connects to everything else. I would like to have a separate mesh. Then you can press the control key and it will just extract one uh, polygon. And now you you are able to Q mesh polygroup all, which is a new group that way now I have a separate model and I can move my vertices to fit my model yeah that's a good idea do that mm. I need to refine that after with the smoothing, which is perhaps not like it should be, but at least I'm starting to have something which looks more like the full helmet. And also this polygroup yeah, oops, sorry. I will just do a quick Q mesh of everything, then just to give some, uh, uh, let's say, boundaries on this part. I will hollow everything after to put just on my head, but uh, at least to, um, to give this uh, thickness, real thickness on this part. Then I will Q mesh, oh, Really extrude to be sure. Uh, I think a flat island, it should be flat enough, no too much flat, sorry. Um, polygroup island, like that. And now I can move slightly these vertices inside. I'm not at the stage where I will try to see uh, if the thickness is good, if it fits my head. I just want to build the shape and after I will refine. It's very difficult to see at this stage uh, where we are, of course. Yeah, we like to uh, just to have this kind of rounded part. And if you look on the front side, which is not, uh, it's difficult to know right now, but I think you see the distance between this part, which is f way flatter than what I did here. 
then I need to consider this part to be more flat but the rounded part is way smaller I think my eyes this part uh, is too is too wide need to be more yeah it's smaller than that And if I want to give something which is uh, uh, more angle on this area, of course, the classic way to do that is to insert a bevel like this, making the vertices a bit closer. And of course, for all this shape, uh, some part will be sculpted. Uh, later. I don't know how far I will sculpt to be honest. I have no idea yet. Let me insert an edge loop. It goes that way. something which would be closer to the surface. You see now if I'm applying the smoothing, this is what I, ha I have. And of course we see the boundaries uh, of the two uh, models. And because the top one seems, because it's falling down that one, yeah. I think this part is going way more outside. More like the, the bottom of the Nazi uh, helmet. What I will do now will be these two parts, just the roof part, uh, just to build the shape. And uh, after I will just going, doing a, a quick uh, preparation for this. Uh, you remember this template uh, that I did quickly, just to see how much it will fit. And you see right now, I build, I built, sorry. I'm looking at the scan. Yeah, I, I have some thickness. You see, I just did the boundary. This part is okay, but uh, it's too much inside. In fact, you see, I did the outside. Yeah. I think it will be fun. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, I think I will have some surprises. I don't know why, but uh, be 
this one seems to be far oops I have my ears which need to fit Well, I can just, yeah. Mm. Not easy. What did you just do before to see what the model looks like with rounded edges? I just press the D key and Shift D to go back which enables or not in the geometry palette you have the dynamic subdivision which is here you see with shift d and d just the, the hotkey to switch between both of course you can change the settings to say okay it's a bit more smoother like that of course i'm lacking of sharp edges and and, and uh, all this kind of stuff but at least I'm moving forward. Okay, I will do the front one and this, I guess, I'm not sure, but you see the shapes are very close, except the one on the background have different, let's say, details. But I will do the front shape and duplicate to do the one on the background. And again, for that, uh, first I will save my project. which is just something more secure. And uh, I will append my, uh, where are you, my polymesh 3D, and like before, initialize quick cube to one and one. Quick cube. I can move it. Let's give some thickness yeah it would be very difficult to see what would be this shape anyway let's go that way that way then I'm doing the front one not the one on the back and after I will duplicate it's going on the, yeah. Sorry, I, I'm doing some fix at the same time. Yeah. Uh, let me insert. Uh, some edge loop There is nothing really complex. Uh, for this kind of models. Well, it's really going inside. Um, up. No, it's no, yeah. It's pretty flat. It's more on this area than you start to round things. Now, what you can do, which is more secure, is just to doing the front 
part of the model and after you do the thickness, which I could do. Or I could do to fix after my model. Not that much because I have the part in the back, I mean the second part. This one is going there. You see, I'm talking way, I mean, not as usual. I'm focusing more on my model. Switch to the move brush. I prefer to use the move brush and not the move function in Z modeler because it's so easy to add some extra polygons where you don't want to have them. I'm not a big fan of what I just did. I think I will redo the thickness of my model because it's not that nice right now. Sorry, I I'm looking at, at what is behind. Uh, let me switch to another view. Yeah, this one is very rounded here. See, this one looks very rounded while this one is less rounded, while the one on the background is more rounded. Yeah. Modeler, let me insert another one. Um, 
do this part. Let me just try to Oh, you see this line that you have between the grid and the model, this is what we call the p-lines, which lets you see the correspondence between some parts and other parts, which can be interesting, but sometimes this is annoying. Then in the draw palette, for this grid, then this left, right, you have the P line. Then let me just uh, remove that. And now I don't have any more this, uh, this line. Let me just switch back to the, okay. To this mode. I think I need to it's very difficult to evaluate the thickness that you need. I hope to finish that for the ZBrush Summit and bring that there if it's not a problem for the customs. <laughs> but yes, it would be cool to have that for the ZBrush Summit. <laughs> I hope some of you will be able to join us at the summit. This is really a great experience. Really. Um, the modeler and I will insert a polygroup island in such region. Hmm. Why? Ah, polygroup inner. Okay, and then it seems to be very, yeah, too wide. Yeah, I need to consider that for the helmet, that these layers that you see, this one should be on the same level, the background one, I mean, the one on the background should be at the same level of this one, then this one needs to be on top of this part. Then it needs to be, um, seems to be very, so why, it's very wide. It's uh, not wide, I mean, the, the width, it's very important. I, something is missing, I don't know why. Indeed because it should be this, we see this one is aligned with the, this one here. Yeah, 
it doesn't look like it's so large that way because it fits these parts the front part fits as well then why it feels so weird I think it's flatter yeah sorry again <laughs> I'm picking to myself yeah I, I will delete everything inside just to rebuild the thickness of the model flat flat then let's just try to see if I'm duplicating this model just as a test uh, duplicate control shift D on the side I think this part is still too rounded. Sorry, I'm not looking at the chat right now. I will do soon. Yeah, it's it's so weird. <laughs> should be more something like that I think my problem is the bottom part of the helmet is too rounded and not enough as a cone or I mean kind of pyramid I mean it's too rounded which does give this effect um, Yeah, I think, yes, I need to move down the helmet inside. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, Moda Kainer, this is what I would do. This is what I said about just um, redoing the thickness because I just need to have this flattened part and <coughs> using Qmesh, uh, like I did to extract uh, um, this bottom part on the back. Just having uh, um, enough polygon will be uh, just okay for that. Okay, so I'm looking at the time because uh, I just want to finish one thing for now. Um, let me just save that. Okay, then what uh, I will just do now, just to finish, let me close, no, I don't want to save my references. I will switch to uh, this, the export and 3D printing because I really want to start uh, uh, that. And you see, it's not the same shape, but at least I know this one fit to my head, roughly. Uh, let me hide everything as well as the grid. But I think my hairs are way too much on this area. I think. Let me just um, use a Z modeler. Oops, sorry. Q mesh a single poly. I should be able to fit my head in that. Uh, I don't need to have that one. It's useless. Why I can't... Ah. I deleted what I did before. Okay, then you see it's not the best mesh, the best model in the world, but enough for me to see if it will work fine. Um, the only thing I'll do is I will select all these polygons and I will put my manipulator gizmo and flatten all of that, that way, and, oops, sorry, I will do the same for this one. Why? Because I will put this part uh, just on the bed of the printer to be just flat, and without too much need of a support. Um, let me give more thickness to that. It's a little bit more of material that I will use, but less than uh, adding more support. We'll understand that uh, later. Sorry, this is kind of uh, some abstract stuff. <laughs> Mm. 
Hmm. Why my scaling is not working? What the hell? I don't know. Okay, then up. Uh, sorry. This is not very sexy what I'm doing right now, but it's it would be useful for me. Okay, then you see I have my template, let's say for my model. Now I will hide my head and with my Z plugin palette, I go in 3D print hub and size option, I want just to work on per sub tool and let me update size ratio and I know this is this one and if you remember I said as uh, I was working um, at uh, um, a tenth of the size but the size was in centimeters I'm working in millimeters then if I'm just picking one and say okay this is not Four point five, but forty five point six. It will be four point five centimeters, while it should be ten more. And I will have a problem of size with my printer, which should be. Oh, that's qu quite big. Why did I do wrong? Um, what did I miss? This one is 2.68 and why I have these values? Um, why I have these values? Because it's taking all my subtool and not per subtool. <laughs> Something is wrong. Uh, this one, let me just move up because the helmet, of course, is way bigger. Uh, okay, anyway, let's export as an STL and all the textures, STL, and I will see 3D print template STL file I don't want to export all my sub tools you see by default it put my visible why something is wrong with that because I try to export everything and it's great out I just want to also select it one okay template okay then now let's go back to this simplified 3d software and what you see oops sorry what you see on screen is a printer uh, um, volume okay uh, then the first thing to do is to import, of course, a 3D model and 3D print template. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I have definitely a problem of size because I can fit my head in the printer. <laughs> this is what I wanted to see. Let's go back inside of ZBrush. Okay, then I want to update size ratio this one okay this one seems to be way more regular i don't know what what i did and i multiply by 100 then 100 to switch to uh, my tenth of the size and then switching from millimeter centimeters to millimeters and now if i'm exporting to stl yes i want to overwrite and if i'm importing now yeah, it's uh, it's bigger than I was expecting. Shit. 
<laughs> um, yeah, because the build volume of the model is uh, 223 millimeters by 223 millimeters, and my size is 269. Yeah, it should fit. Then you can change some values. You double click on the model, and I want to rotate around the x axis of 90 degrees, no, minus 90 degrees. And in the, you can center and arrange model. And yeah, it doesn't fit. the printer in one direction then i will need to fix that it's really important to work on that of course i could off oh, you know what let's split the model and doing some keys quickly yeah let's do that okay come on we have the brush for r8 now with boolean this is just a piece of kick cake sorry kick <laughs> Um, I will just clone my model that way and what I will do is uh, I will split my model in four parts to have four legs and having a sun mm, yeah this one this one this one this one and having just two connectors to plug in then nothing really complex um, well well, 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 if I want to split that, okay, then duplicate, 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 this is my four parts. Okay, then I have the top one. I'm removing that and that and that. Oops. And that. Then now I can do my delete hidden. Okay, display properties, double. I will just recreate quickly this polygon with the modeler. It's very easy because I can use my bridge edges. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, I have now one part. This one, I will just ah shit why why do i zoom with control and shift I don't know what did happen. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I did something, I don't know how I can do that in ZBrush and it's so weird. Um, okay, a second one. Then this one. Oh, I did the opposite. Oh, I'm so stupid. I want this one, then I need to delete everything. It should be this one and this one. Sorry. Geometry, modify, topology, delete hidden, and like before. Okay. Subtool. And now I just want to have one side. And now we do after a copy on the other side. Geometry, delete hidden, bridge, bridge. Then I can subtool, delete this one. 
can duplicate and during a mirror deformation. Okay, and now I have my four parts. Okay, and I just need to do these connectors just to uh, having kind of plug uh, inside. Um, to do that, I will work only on this one. And I will append, let's say a cube. Sorry for these extra steps. that let's duplicate this one doing a rotation of 90 degrees okay then what i will do i will do that as a positive let me merge down two of them okay and i will duplicate that one and I will do a slightly of inflate of let's say two and this one will be negative then this one is negative and this one will be added to this one and this is a start group it will process this one and this one and this one is a new one where I will duplicate new start group but this one is negative negative and negative then if i display all my stuff displaying the live boolean mode and let me just hide all the other one you see i have my negative cube if i'm switching to this one and hiding this one i have my positive one and if i go to this one you see then everything has been done okay it's not a line but i, I don't care then what i will do is i will now process all of that then in the Boolean, make Boolean mesh, which puts Y5, oh no, sorry, here, okay. I have now all my models together as separate objects. And if I switch to solo mode, I have this one, this one, this one, and this one. That's why it's important to have Boolean stuff inside of ZBrush because, yeah, it's a basic model. It's not uh, uh, very uh, artistic, but it's needed for this type of project. And being able to do my templates, okay, it doesn't fit my printer, which is big already. Okay, I'm, sli I'm slicing and it's done. Nothing else. Um, then for that one, I will export all the subtool as separate files. Um, for all subtools, update size ratio, this is this one, and like before, I will multiply by a thousand. Okay, and you see, like before, then I'm exporting as STL file. And, okay, I don't care for the name. And let's go back to um, my simplified 3d software that i quit before
Um, that you are beveling the male keys. No, I don't bevel the male uh, uh, keys because it's very basic shape and pff, I can send a little bit and it, it will be faster than... Uh, uh, it should be okay, to be honest. Okay, and then I'm importing everything and you see now I have everything which is ready. Then I can do my minus 90 degrees. You'll understand soon now, oh, it's working. Okay, and I can mesh. I want to then center and arrange model, control R, and I'm able to move them to my build platform. You see now it's way more easier to make your model fitting uh, uh, your um, your building volume. I will do all of them in the same direction with ninety oh, minus ninety. That and this one as well. Um, one eighty. <laughs> Okay, then I put everything. Then I have my model which has been arranged to my build platform of my printer. Then the software is very easy to use as well, of course, for the basic things that you have your models and below you have the process, which can be multiple processes. The process is how your model will be sliced. Then you have this window which appears, which is a basic window. You define which type of material, which will be the PLA for me. You can define the quality. Let's say I want to have something which is fast because it's not something which is artistic. And inside you have the infill. The infill is, if you don't know what is 3D printing, your model wants a volume. Uh, you, you, you can have a big volume and the inside part is, let's say, not visible. It's a lot of metal if you want to have something which is just full of material. Then this infill will build a kind of pattern which will be less, more or less dense to give some strength, but not using too many material. Then 50% meaning that it won't be a hundred percent filled by material, but just 15%. And of course, the lower the value is, the um, less dense, but more fragile would be your model, but of course less material. Then let's stay to something like 15. And you can say, oh, I want to generate some supports. Remember, if or if you don't know for 3D printing, if your model uh, have some overhang, like a hand like that, which is printing from the bottom, you need to have support to help your fingers and then the hand growing. Then this is the same for this type of model, where in fact there is no overhang, except inside of the female part for the keys, I'm oh, sorry. Here, where well, you have some overhangs on this area, then perhaps you need some support. Same for these small cubes, you see. It will start to print and then nothing. Let me show you that. Uh, let me edit the process. I don't want to have raft and support and things like that. I just do OK. And now I click on this prepare to print process. And you see the computing has been pretty quick. And what you see right now, is a kind of visual oops, sorry, representation of your model. You see all of these tubes, this is what the printer will uh, then print as a, a very small, uh, uh, a thin uh, uh, hairs, let's say, of material, which will be 0.44 millimeters uh, of thickness. And below you have this slider which show you all the process layer by layer and you can also ask to see the tool head and to see what would be the movement that will be done by the printer and you see what i said before for this overhang let me just focus on this part you see it starts to build from the bottom and 
you see this is um, uh, the, the real thickness of the wall of my model which would be something like two um, um, how can I say that um, doing two not circle but uh, ah uh, sorry I'm looking I'm <laughs> Uh, doing the boundary of the model twice, uh, then it gives some almost one millimeter of thickness. And very quickly, it starts to build the inside. And what you see here is this infill, trying to fill with 50% of material. And of course, the higher is the value, the more dense will be this part. And, and you see, now it continues to print. And then at this stage, it starts to print this male keys but connected to nothing and because it's connected to nothing it will be very difficult for the printer to print in fact the fdm printer can build some uh, overhang areas which may be something like a few millimeters some like quite large but if it's connected to something else that you have another part connected at the at the end of the keys it may work but not like this that's why you need to have some support then you can say for the process i want to Generate support. I click on OK. Prepare to print. And now you see that it creates this kind of extra material, this kind of zigzag material, which will be a kind of bed to support these keys. And if you look at, sorry, but I always pressing the middle button of the mouse to pan, which doesn't work. And for this part, this is the same. In fact, you have some overhang on the top and you see it builds some material on these areas. But why not on this part? Because the software estimates that it's not that needed. But if you want to be safe, you can do the support by yourself. You can click on this button, which opens a support window and clicking on this generate automatically uh, automatically the support and this is what you have right now and it doesn't prevent you to click on this add new support structure and let me go back on the mod back of my model and say oh i want to add more on this part this part to be just safe this one this one just to avoid, let's say, some errors. And these extra cubes, it will print only what is needed. You will see that if it's outside, of course, it will stop before. This is just a visualization of what will be the support. Then I'm done, prepare to print. And you see that this extra support has been created and now I'm able to start to print my model. And on top you have an evaluation, which is at right now 19 hours and 41 minutes, which is quite long for this kind of model. Then you have the estimation of the weight of plastic, which is almost 200 uh, uh, grams for um, 24,000 millimeters of plastic to print. Then if you want to change that, you can go to your process and say, oh, Oh, sorry, it was PLA, sorry. Uh, I want to change my setting to be fast, then still my support. I can click on prepare to print. Now it's better, this is 11 hours. And what really changed is the thickness of each layer. Then if I go back and say, oh, I want to have the control, then you have this show advanced. And then welcome in the hell of settings <laughs> you can change the setting of so many things for that so retractation this is when the, uh, um, the 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 tool head is stopping then just retracting a little bit the material to avoid having some artifacts uh cleaning the uh, uh, the nozzle uh, then the layer okay this is a thickness which is quite thick right now then you have the perimeter um, uh, um, perimeters shares this is what I was looking this is this boundaries of the model you can increase or reduce that you can reduce the amount of infills and all this kind of thing will have an impact and more important in other you have the speed if you increase the speed which is fine for my printer to um, 
3600 millimeters per minute, which is uh, 600 centimeters uh, per minute. Uh, oh, sorry, no. Um, well, <laughs> um, just the speed, and by increasing the value, you increase the speed. Sorry, it's, it's late for me. And now this is just seven hours and 21 minutes for this model. And you see, I increase perhaps a little bit too much the infill, which is not enough dense. I can go back and I can change this infill perhaps back to something like 14%, prepare to print. And this is a little bit more, eight hours and one minute. Then this is something that can print overnight which is quite big, in fact, not so much material, but each layer takes some time. And you see, I have uh, uh, 26 millimeters for the maximum size. And then I can do that now. And meaning that I can launch a printer now and tomorrow morning, I will be able just to assemble and checking on my head uh, if it's working or not. And then when it's done, you just need to export for me uh, as a G-code file and starting the print process. Uh, I will just stop, stop here for tonight, uh, today, uh, on this part. Uh, I may work a little bit on this front part of uh, the uh, 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 helmet. Let me just go back to my model. Uh, if I have the time before the next week, uh, just trying to move forward, just to be sure it's it's fine. I, I won't do I won't do anything else. I just want to refine the proportion of uh, of everything, trying to, to to refine as much as possible, to be sure that the next time we are able to refine everything. And as soon as this shape will be okay, it will be easy to add all the details and all this kind of thing. And of course, I will know if it will fit my head or not based on the template and refine based of the template. Uh, which would be a, a great a great help for me. And after it will be pretty quick. And I guess the third session will be all the free printing preparation and cutting and things like that. And perhaps the fourth uh, uh, um, part will be just the post process, I hope. Um, anyway, uh, let me just look at uh, 149 for Simplify 3D. It was more expensive before then, which is something great. Um, okay, let me just look at the chat before saying goodbye. Seagull um, uh, 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 Rush, not Seagull Crush, no. Uh, yes, the support can be in a different material if your printer have, uh, have a dual head. Um, I have one of my printer, which is kind of not broken, but uh, well, piece of shit, sorry, uh, is a dual head and I'm not happy at all about the dual head stuff. There is too much collision between materials. Uh, if you really want to have something perfect, you need to clean the nozzle each time you switch off layers, which makes the process way, way, way slower. Then now I know there is more printer which are able to support multiple materials. Then Ultimaker 3 now is a dual head uh, printer, dual extruder, then perhaps this is better. I need to try, but I want to upgrade my printer. Then perhaps I will have one for test, uh, to test uh, in the future, but I don't know. Then yes, you can use PVA, which is a, a material which is soluble in water, then it just, um, just dilute in water, then it leaves some no need to send and things like that, which is in theory very good. But I don't really know professional users of 3D printing using that for now. But things are changing, printers are better, then perhaps it's the time to, to start. But for me, it will be the same material for everything. Uh, for the, the, the scale inside of the brush, I'm not, because I'm using this process of working in the real scale inside of the brush, but at a tenth or a thousand of the scale. And then at, when I'm exporting, I'm changing the scale. You should look at, um, I'm not really using that, but it's working pretty similar to, the, to 3D Print Hub. You have Scale Master uh, inside of the brush where you can set the units of your model. This is important when you are uh, importing a model from ZBrush and then it will set the scale uh, of ZBrush. Then you can change some settings. Of course, you can define your unit. Then uh, look at this plugin. This is made by Joseph and I think you have the 
uh, a kind of inside uh, uh, documentation and if you click on it you have a video on youtube explaining the process then look at that this is really worth uh, uh, looking at it and because joseph Josh is doing cnc stuff and 3d printing i guess this is what you're looking for um, Okay, you're welcome. Okay, then, uh, thank you very much. Sorry, it has been a little bit of different things and some technical stuff and not very, let's say, sexy stuff at the full discount at the beginning. A lot of technical things about explaining the uh, depth of field and stuff like that. Uh, ZBrush, this is just the foundation for now of the helmet and not that sexy as you can see right now on screen. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the, the 3D printing part with um, Simplify will be more interesting for the second or third part of the 3D uh, of this session of the Bosch Live. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the end of the day of the weekend, whatever wherever you are located, um, and see you soon. Bye bye.